What is up, good people? Jungle Link here. Hope you're doing well. HBO, they're putting out a new documentary on Tuesday about Bitcoin, but they're making a wild claim. They are claiming that they are going to unmask Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. When I first heard that, I'm like, yeah, sure, you're going to unmask Satoshi. We've heard that one before, but I got to tell you, I think this is for real, and I think they got him, and I think they're going to unmask him. Uh, spoiler alert, even though I haven't seen the documentary, I'm going to talk about who I think it is. And so if you don't want to even hear any, any of that, exit out, come back after we watch the documentary on Tuesday. I'm hoping it's going to be really good. I mean, it's put on by HBO, so it should be high quality. And, you know, I get really interested in this stuff from time to time. And one of the areas I really looked at is that email list, that cryptographer email list where Satoshi first put out the Bitcoin white paper, made the announcement, uh, you know, what he had built. And it was my belief that he was probably part of this group. It's a very obscure group, especially back in those days. It's just how often do you run into cryptographers in your everyday life? Not very often. So I figured he's part of this, you know, very small and unique group. And so I was tracking things through. And if you go back only about four or five messages, you have the scheme team. I started looking into it and I go, you know what? I'm fairly certain that Satoshi is part of the scheme team. Now, there was this competition for who would design SHA-3, the upgrade to the SHA-2 algorithm. Skeen ultimately did not win, but it was a great algorithm. It's been used by some cryptocurrencies even. It just wasn't the winner here. But anyway, the one out of this group that I picked that I thought for sure was Satoshi was Tadayoshi Kono. Maybe it's because his name sounds kind of like Satoshi Nakamoto, why I got stuck on that name. But, uh, you know, this is a highly skilled cryptographer. Uh, you know, he is closely associated with Hal Finney. I think he even spent time out there where Hal lives. He cites him in his papers a lot. But that's the problem. They're all so closely linked. Everyone knows each other in these groups. So that's not, uh, you know, a great indicator in a lot of ways. Um, also, you know, he worked on a lot of government voting systems, things of this nature. I mean, Tadayoshi is a serious individual. He's an academic. Most people agree. You know, Satoshi's probably an academic. He works for Washington, I think. So it looks like I had the right group, but I think I had the wrong guy. And the one that HBO, I believe, is going to unmask, and the betting markets also agree here, is Len Sassaman. I'm almost positive they're going to unmask Len. And I think they're right. I think that is who Satoshi is. The only question is what kind of proof do they have? Is it definitive? Are we going to watch this and go, wow, that's it? Or will there still be some doubts because it's just an impossible thing at this point to prove? I don't know. We're going to have to watch it and find out. But, you know, when we look at this upcoming documentary, it seems like Len, for whatever reason, has been building momentum as the possible Satoshi for about the last year or so. I haven't really been paying a lot of attention, so I, I didn't notice this, but this has really been picking up steam. I mean, you can see when Len died, they in one of the blocks, they put a picture of him. You see that right next to him in the blockchain, on the Bitcoin blockchain, you have this you know memorial forever of Len. Pretty special, pretty cool. When we start looking at, I'm just going to go over some general stuff here. We'll come back and discuss after the documentary. But, you know, this is a guy that had the expertise to do the job. That's the thing. Sometimes there's a suspect, but people are like, yeah, that ain't the person. They don't have the ability to actually build this. Timeline matches up. Len is very active when Bitcoin is getting uh, released. But then when he commits suicide, Satoshi stops posting. And, you know, he's all about, he's really a big privacy advocate. Of course, he has that academic background. Uh, so a lot of stuff, and he's very, very closely associated with Hal. Uh, so there's more to it than that, but, you know, just kind of an overarching view. That's kind of the deal. So we'll see what they have for us on Tuesday. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's someone else. But uh, I think that's the way this is going to go. It's almost certainly going to be Len. And the question is, how much proof do they actually have? Now, the question I hear everyone asking what changes if we do now know Satoshi was Len or whoever it might be? If they really prove it, we know it. What changes with Bitcoin? Uh, it's kind of fun having this mysterious figure that no one knows who it is. Kind of cool to think about. But foundationally, not really anything changes. Even if they unmask Satoshi and he's still alive. That's what makes Bitcoin so great at this point in time. 
Doesn't matter what Satoshi's intentions were, what he thinks today, the Bitcoin code is what it is and code is law. The network functions as it does with the decentralized nodes that run that network, the miners, like Satoshi coming back today, dead or alive, doesn't change anything except for one aspect. If they know who it is and somehow those keys are around and someone's able to now find them because they know his identity, uh, you know, that could be problematic because now we got coins on the move, a lot of coins that were never supposed to move or at least haven't to date. So I guess there's some risk, maybe minor risk there. But, uh, you know, if someone had access to those keys, I think they already would have moved those Bitcoins. Uh, Len was married, but he might not have left it to his wife because he saw it as dangerous. Who knows? Maybe he didn't actually commit suicide. That's another thing. You know, cryptocurrency is a very dangerous game especially playing at the level he does, you know, I wouldn't put it past a government or some other agency uh, to take him out. I'm not saying that happened, but it's definitely possible. You know, this is a dark industry, a lot of criminality, a lot of government involvement. That could definitely happen as well. So we'll, we'll watch this uh, series, come back and talk about it. But uh, that's interesting. You know, I haven't been keeping up on things. And it looks like Len has been picking up steam. The betting market thinks it's him. And uh, after kind of taking just a brief look at this, knowing about the skiing team and a lot of the other stuff, uh, moving parts, I I'm pretty sure it's Len. So we'll find out. Let me know what you think down below. As always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.